Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to show you all step by step how to paint this uh, mother and son walking down the lane on a 16 by 20 canvas. Um, and to start with, we're just going to be using the following colors and I'm going to add the rest of them as we progress throughout this painting. I've got blue teal, white, uh, neon yellow cool, orange, pink, and violet. So I'm going to go ahead and get started using a larger brush. And I've got a number 50 filbert brush. What I want to do is wet the canvas first to get it uh, nice and slick for my paintings to blend smoothly. So you just want to get a little bit of water on your canvas. Just simply spread it all around. This will really help those of you having trouble with your acrylics drying out too quickly. Okay, so I'm going to start with a little bit of yellow and white first. A little bit more water and white. Okay, and the next color, orange. A little bit down here and a little bit up and over part of that yellow up in the sky I haven't decided where my horizon line is going to be yet but the pathway and the foreground will have a little bit of that orange in it My brush a little bit wet again and I'm going to use some pink just a little bit here this will give us some really pretty tones for a sunset and then right away take my teal my purple and a little bit of white I'm going to start at the top need a little bit more purple or violet and white So I'm just going to swirl and gently blend out those colors in between the other colors and partially over the existing colors. This will give us a nice color to our, for our shadows as well. So we'll go ahead and add it down here. Be sure to pick up a little bit of water whenever you need to. Sometimes we just need more water and not more paint because we have a lot of paint in our brush still. Go back over to get the rest of my violet and some white. Now I'm going to use my pink too and I just want to tone this blue up here and have it be more of a lilac color. I still want to have some blue in here but just not so much. And I'm going to switch over to a one and a half inch blending brush. I'm going to get it wet and I'm going to start, okay I need a little bit more water on there. I'm going to start going over my colors and pulling and sweeping to blend them a little bit more. Be sure to catch any drips that might be falling or running down the canvas. To take some white with a little bit more water 
and just start to soften. See how pretty that looks? You don't have to over blend. You can still have a little bit of those colors peeking through. softer and take a little bit of the water off you can you can just take a soft very soft blending mop brush like this or even a little rag look how soft you can make it this is just one of the most satisfying ways to paint skies so wet on wet layers like this so I'm kind of just fluffing those colors up with that bit of water on there and it gives you very dreamy looking background. Always make sure you have a few of these brushes on hand. When the other one gets too saturated, you can take a fresh one like this and go ahead and use that to finish off softening any other areas that you might need to. Now I'll just show you what you can do. You can take a bit of white and a bit of yellow or whatever color that you want. And you can also come in and add that. Isn't that pretty? You guys have to try this technique. It's gonna make your oils or your acrylics look like oils. People are gonna think you did an oil painting. A Little bit of orange in there as well. We'll get this really pretty light peach color. Look at that, just softly layer, not a lot of blending. The trick is to have a few dry ones. That way you'll continue getting that soft look. Okay, so I think I'm ready to start coming in with the next step. Just finish up that area there. And we'll start coming in with um, the background trees. And I'm gonna be using a liner brush. I've got a long liner brush here. There's no number on it, but you can use any liner brush that you feel comfortable with. And I'm gonna get a little bit of my burnt sienna out now. Got this one here by Liquitex Basics. This is a really good brand of paint that I like to use, if you guys are wondering. So again, you wanna have a lot of water on your brush. And I'm gonna take, cause I like the, the combination of a little bit of this teal with the burnt sienna. More water. See how thin it is? You wanna practice and see how it pulls out of your brush you can do that then your brush is ready so I'm just going to start really pulling while I'm pulling I'm shaking I'm going like this that's going to give my trees a lot of character So the size of trees that you make is going to really um, determine the perspective in your painting.
And it's fun to play around and experiment. You know, you could do the same painting a few times, experimenting with different sizes of trees, where you start them. Obviously, I'm thinking my horizon line is going to be right here. I think maybe I'll just have one tree that goes a little bit higher up here. I'm going to leave it like that for now and I'm going to start working on some of the foliage and foreground. I've got one of my oval mop brushes. This is a one inch and I'm just going to take a little bit of my neon yellow with my blue and my burnt sienna. We'll see what color we can make here. Maybe Maybe add just a little bit more of that yellow. And I'm gonna start tapping the base of these trees here. And then we'll set this one in here and it's just a gentle little sweep and pull. And give it a feeling that it's going way back there, but see I'm doing this now because I have less paint on my brush, so it's going to get a faded further away feel to it just by doing that. So as we build up to the foreground, we want it to stand out more. So I'm going to add a little bit more now. And we can pull and sweep out a little bit too, creating some shadows and little, little bits of grass and weeds. See wherever we have the purple, the darker shades there, that's how we know where our shadows are. You can change it up anytime. The ratio of teal, yellow, burnt sienna. And I recommend doing that because you're going to get a much more interesting looking landscape this way. Otherwise, it can be very flat and predictable and boring to make all the grass and all the leaves and trees the same shade of green. Gonna add a little bit up in the trees here. Tap, tap, tap. Purposely adding a little bit of the light green over top of that pink because it looks so pretty. So you can apply your leaves to the ends of your branches, but you can also add them on parts of the trees that don't even have any branches. That'll give your tree a little bit more dimension, giving it a front 
and back side as well as the sides. So see, I, have, I don't have any branches down here, but I'm just gonna change my tree up slightly by just making it up there. Bringing the branches and foliage down a little bit lower. So I'll take just a little bit of water on my brush now. See how it changes the shape? I'm just going to gently pull and sweep. Just a little bit more water. Loosen that out of there. This muted sort of olive green looks really nice with all the pastel colors. Just going to gently scumble and blend out some more of this paint to give some of these areas of the tree oh just make them look a little bit uh, fuller and just some blurry background far away trees way back there Okay, now we can start coming in with some highlights. I'm gonna use a different yellow this time. I'm gonna use my cadmium yellow light hue. So this is a cool yellow like the other one, but this one's not a neon or fluorescent like the other one is. Okay, so I've got another dry and clean oval mop brush to use. And I'm gonna take a bit of white with my yellow and be sure to look below this video in the description box there's a little arrow down here and you click on that and then all of the um, supplies materials colors and brushes will be down there okay so I'm just going to start tapping lightly I add a little bit of this All over and a little pull and sweep as well. You want to apply your highlights partially over top of your first layer. That way you're not covering up everything and you've got a little bit of both. I'm just bringing a little bit more warmth and sunshine into this painting now. The combination of the tapping and the sweeping like this just gives uh, the painting, the landscape, a really nice feel to it because you've got a, a nice balance of uh, different textures and brush strokes. Now these colors will slightly change once the painting is all dry. Especially being down here over top of the darker base. And I'm just going to work out the rest of my paint and swirl it around, swirl my brush around down here just to give it a little bit more of a blended look. And I can get away with doing this because the first layer is dry. I'm just going to go full strength with my yellow. 
I don't want to have too many bright highlights here. So by leaving the white out, I'll get more of a, a lighter shade of green. Be kind of more like a filter. All right, we can't forget about our tree up there. So let's go back and take just a little bit of white, tap, tap, tap to get that shape. And we'll just start adding. So if you want to have your tree a little bit more in shadow, then obviously don't add as many highlights. You can just add a little bit less if you want. I always add a little bit more because I know I'm when I'm teaching, when you guys watch me do something, when I'm demonstrating, that, that's the best way for you to learn is by watching. So I tend to um, highlight a little bit more, shadow a little bit more, or shade a little bit more, I should say. I'm going to go over to little filbert brush number six and I'm going to use this to come in and add a few more brighter highlights. So with a little bit of peach and yellow, well the orange that made that peach, a little bit of yellow, just make a light warm peachy color here and slight little scoops and that's why I'm using uh, the filbert brush because it's got that round end and it really helps Take a little bit more of my orange. I like the way the, the orange more of the peachy orange color looks with against the violet Then a little bit more white up here, maybe just a little bit of yellow. I think I might have picked up a little bit of pink in there, but that's okay. Not enough to change the color too much. And I think I'm going to add a little bit, just drying a little bit just a little bit choppier than what I'd like so I'm gonna I can add a little bit of that peachy color in here wash my brush out and just soften so that might actually look really pretty if we because it's a soft really soft background and we could come in and just add a few little breaks in between the clouds. Got a little drip there. Yeah, just a little something like that I think is pretty. soft buttery yellow highlight back here give this even more perspective just when you think you have your highlights bright enough you can also take just a little bit of white I'm gonna go over some of these um, just over top of these tree trunks here just to set them back a little further and then take a bit of burnt sienna with my blue and just here I've got to finish this off and we'll add a little bit of because this one's a little bit closer and bigger so we'll add a little bit of a shadow right there I just want to show you guys the new because I'm really excited about it I just picked this up yesterday at Michael's turquoise blue I haven't used this one before and I really like it so that's um, one new one I can recommend you guys add to your collection of paint and I'm going to continue using this number six filbert I'm going to take my 
uh, turquoise blue. I think I've been calling it blue teal. It is actually very similar to my blue teal. So I'm going to take both of these colors and I'm going to start, I think I'm going to set them right about here. I'm just going for this so I do not have a reference photo. I'm just going to start with a hat on an angle because that just makes it more interesting right off the bat. And we'll just have a boy down here. Back of her head, down into her shoulders, give her a little bit of a ruffle. Side of his face, maybe he's got one of those little berets on or those, I can't think of what those hats are called. I've been doing a lot of um, daughters and their mothers, and a lot of us have little boys too, and me included, so I've got a, a grandson and two sons and a daughter, so need to make it fair. a little ruffle there at the bottom of the dress. And the shadow. Just with a dry brush you can easily add a shadow like that. interested in painting like figures and portraits old-fashioned I've done a little bit of it on my channel you guys have seen that and I notice when I'm looking at those old photos the little boys have um, those little knickers I think they're called correct me if I'm wrong It's just really impressionistic. This is her elbow coming in here. And I'm liking this beautiful, rich violet. So I'm going to continue to use this. So if you add a little line on a slant like this, it can make it look like his foot's up and he's actually taking a step. I tell you guys, impressionistic is the way to go. And I just love the look too. Like it just gives it, adds some elegance So yeah, you just don't have to try too hard. And a little bit of height there. 
to her hat. And then I'm going to add a little bit of highlight. So a little bit of white with my teal. And I'm going to do a little curve over, a little half circle like that, and then pull up. Just to create some little folds. If you guys are enjoying this, be sure to let me know in the comments. So it's too dry for me to tape that off now, so I'm going to try and match the background color with a bit of yellow, white, and the turquoise. Yeah, this color is pretty. Look at that. Let's go ahead and add some of that in here too. All these soft pretty hints color really add to a painting okay i'm going to continue with her dress this has the same sort of vibe to it, kind of similar. The landscape is completely different, and I'm uh, talking about the one I did uh, the other day with the mother walking with the daughter. And I'm just creating little wiggles and squiggles like this for some soft frills and ruffles in her dress. I know this is going to dry a little bit darker. go back to and just add I'm just taking that that turquoise with this violet is making such a gorgeous color you can always go back and add more at any time oh this painting is making me really Kind of nostalgic, you know, for those days when my my boys were this age and they'd want to hold my hand. <laughs> it's funny, my two boys are two years apart and they used to fight over me. It was so cute. And it's sure making me think about my my grandson, who's this age now as well, he'll be three in June. So bring our hat down a little bit lower. There we go. And add a little bit more of that violet. Love this color. Okay. 
So I think it would be pretty to add some flowers here along the side. And it would kind of just tie in uh, nicely with uh, the color they are. So I'm going to go ahead and continue using this brush with a little bit of the teal or turquoise and the violet. And I'm just going to start simply pulling some little petals in here like this. And I'm not going to try to match the exact same color. I'm going to have a little bit of each color. Sometimes more of the blue or turquoise and sometimes less. I'll just add a little half circle to the center. You can make yours any color you want. You can have it a little bit yellow like this, a little yellow and blue to make a, a green color. I think it might just um, blend in to the background a little bit, so I don't think I'll do that. Um, take a little bit more of these colors again. And I'll just continue, continue along here, having fun painting little daisies or forget-me-nots. You can add any flower that you want. I'll take a little bit of that pink in there too, since I'm running, running a little low on my violet. And then if you take, if you find that your petals are drying a little bit too dark, just take a little bit of white and add a highlight. And feel free to overlap either with a lighter shade or a darker shade. That way it'll stand out. Different sizes. There's a few things about making flowers that are important, right? You want to make, add a little bit of yellow here to my white. So that, that shows up nicely. I think I'll do that for all, all of them. Um, Different sizes of your flowers are important in a painting. You don't want them all to be the same size. I think I'm going to have a few old fashioned looking flowers, maybe some lupin or some stock flower up here. Take a little bit of my pink and white. I'm just going to tap. Little tabs that get smaller and smaller and start to curve up. I'll make a few of those. Different sizes, one a little bit smaller down here. And a little bit of yellow and turquoise. Because you know the tops of those flowers that haven't really opened up yet have a little bit of a light yellowy green. Let's be brave and add one here. Now these kind of remind me of the foxgloves that grow in my garden every year and they come, they always surprise me they come 
they show up in different areas and it's always such a pleasure and a joy to see where they decide to surprise me. I hope I have a few that uh, show up right outside my studio. The very first year we moved here, I did. And they, they get curvy like this, some of them. And boy, do they get tall. Some of them were about six feet. So maybe it depends on how healthy they are or how much uh, light that they're needing. Maybe they're trying to reach the light. So again, I'm just taking a little bit of yellow and white. You can also use a little bit of the turquoise in there if you want. I think I'll add some, without even washing my brush off, I'll add some daisies down here. So for these smaller ones, you can use a smaller brush, you can use a liner brush, a brown brush, or just use less pressure and just, just little quick dabs with the tip of your brush. And of course, for larger flowers, you'll push a little bit harder and you can use a bigger brush. Too much blue in there. So I'm gonna go back to a little bit of yellow and white. So I'm just going to finish this off by maybe adding a few little birds and I think I'll take a little bit of white burnt sienna and a, a teal turquoise, a little bit more white in there, make a pretty shade of gray, and we'll put one There's so just a little bit of water in my brush to help that flow out better. Make your birds different sizes. Now I used to add three of everything for significance of my three kids, but I've got a grandson now. So <laughs> if you've noticed, I started adding uh, four. And I'm gonna take a little bit of my white and just catch the edge of some of these wings and it will dry a bit darker. Ooh, and it might not show up that well as this one here. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more right there. Anyways, those are the colors I like to use for uh, the birds. And I just want to soften the edges of the figures a little bit. 
So let's see, I'll go into my pink, my blue, and my white. Not a lot of paint on my brush. I mean, it's just the smallest amount. It doesn't take too much to add a little bit of, just to soften it a bit, you know? A little bit of uh, a yellow in here, or a bit more of a, a highlight in between them. Graves over this wing. I might need to go back and add just a little bit of a highlight. Depending on how much water's in your brush and how much paint you have at the time of first applying your flower petals. I'm going to add a little dab inside some of these to make them look a little bit more like foxgloves. I think they're a little bit darker inside too, but I'm going to make them stand out by adding a little bit of, a little bit of light in them. And one more thing to finish this painting off. I wonder if you guys can guess what it is. If you get the right color here. <laughs> okay, I don't want to have too much. And the reason why I'm adding the burnt sienna to this teal is just to tone it a little bit. I don't want it to be bright blue, uh, drippy moss here. Did any of you guys know that that's what I was going to do? You're probably wondering when I was going to add some. I just love what it brings to a painting. Take a little bit of the white and the yellow in there as well. These trees are farther away, so I'm trying to use less pressure and less paint. So you can hear me pushing a little bit harder there. Add a little bit more of a shadow down here at the base. All right, well, this one is all done, and I sure had fun creating this. Uh, there's no reference photo. I just made this up um, and decided to <laughs> record and, and share the process with you guys. This is what I've been doing quite a bit lately. I want to share more with my art these days and just get more and more of you guys out there happier, creating, starting a new hobby. Uh, it's really good for your mind, body, and spirit to paint and to use color as well. So hopefully this image touched you guys today and gives you good 
fond memories of a little boy maybe in your life, past, present, or maybe you have one uh, coming in the future. So um, take care, everybody, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for brand new content. I'll see you soon. Bye.